Okay, I'm going to try and show you how to do this from start to finish so it might get a little bit long. We're going to uh, take that stop off of this to make it 360. The first thing I do is I get my stuff together. I'm going to need a long sanding stick. I get a couple of uh, knives with brand new number 11 blades in them. And if you don't have a set of these yet, you're probably going to want to get a set there. Uh, I think I paid like 10 bucks for this set. You can get them at places like Harbor Freight or even the dollar store has got them. They don't have to be super high quality for a lot of the stuff that we do. I've got some better ones. This is one of my better set that I use for the touch-up work. But anyway, the first thing I do is I take my sanding stick and just smooth it out because it's got those... Uh, um, plastic uh, molding defects, you know, burrs and flash and stuff. I'm just using, a, I got a, a rough medium sanding stick and I'm using the medium side. And I'm, I'm just taking off the burrs on both sides so that when I put them together, they'll, uh, they won't uh, have anything interfering. They'll mate nicely together. Now, this part's going to be kind of a pain for you because you're going to have to have the ring that you're modifying and you're probably going to have to take a ring out of one of your other tanks for a few minutes to use as your pattern. So once you get them smooth and they fit together nicely, I take them and I line them up so that those teeth are just exactly matching each other and then I tape it, okay? Now once I've got it taped down like that, the stop is on this side, I'm going to set it down I'm just going to take my number 11 blade and I'm going to mark where those teeth are on that stop. I'm just going to draw lines right where all the teeth are. Just carefully following along the edges, making sure to get all the way to the back. Once I've marked all of those, I mark along the top where the uh, outer diameter would be. Don't uh, don't be scared to go back in and touch up if you need it. Look in there and make sure you're getting good lines. If you want to go over it a couple times just to be safe, no problem. Okay, then once I've got those marked, I can untape things. See how good I am at that? <laughs> years of experience, buddy. Years of experience. Now, I've got these little marks. I don't know how well they'll show up on the video camera, but they, they're really easy here. And the first thing I'll do, just to be sure, is I go in there and I, I mark the what's called the root diameter or the minor diameter of the gear teeth so I know that I won't go too far. Okay, now, once you've got it like that, there's a lot of different ways to do it. A lot of times I'll, I'll just carve away little bitty pieces with the knife, like so. Another way to do it is to take a pair of nippers. That's a fairly thick stop on there. And you can cut away pieces, okay? You can also cut into the grooves just a little bit. But before you do that, the best idea is to take a good flat file. You can also use a, a knife for this or whatever. But you'll see that the area where the stop is, is thicker than the gear teeth, and you need to get rid of that. And I sometimes do it like this. Now this can be, you know, really time consuming, so if you want to speed the process along, you can try and carve some of it away with the knife. Be very careful. These, if you screw up, man, you only get one shot, you know. You also want to be very careful not to cut yourself, obviously. I'm sure my big hands and my big stupid head are right in the way so you can't see what I'm doing. But I'm just gently parsing that away with the blade. I'm just showing you different methods. Use whichever method you're more comfortable with. If you want to file it, that's the safest way and it'll take the longest, but there's less chance of messing anything up. Just, if you do file it, make sure you keep your file flat so that you don't get into the teeth on either side. This is not my better file. There's my better file. 
These files are a little more expensive. I get these at a place called MSC Direct, which is an industrial supply house, and uh, they're about eight or nine bucks a piece. I'll find a good spot on here. Here we go. You could use a Dremel here. You could use a sanding stick, but the sanding stick is kind of flexible. And uh, might get into the teeth on either side. I found that a lot of patience and a very sharp blade goes a long way to accomplishing. See, now I just nicked the barely nick the top of that tooth. That's what you got to be really careful for. If you cut too deep into one of them teeth, you're in trouble. Okay, so I'm just bringing it down. It's a lot closer. I'm going to move to different kinds of files and touch it up a little bit. Again, being careful to keep the file flat so I don't hit the teeth on either side. That little bird there just bothers me, so I'm taking it off. Didn't like it. <laughs> okay, now I've got it down pretty well flat on there. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's more important to get it nice and flat out by the teeth than down in the root, because when these mesh together, they don't go that deep. They tend to have a lot of backlash and a lot of play. Like I said, this was going to get long and boring. We want to do it right. And now I've got that part out. Now, I'm just going to slowly cut little V's in there. Back and forth. See, I'm trying to hold it so you can see what I'm doing. Hold it in whatever method is the most comfortable for you. Once you get that first little V started, you can go side to side and just trim down in there. Just keep going back and forth from side to side. One tooth. Again, I'm trying to hold it so you can see what I'm doing. Just cutting in there and just making a little V. Just enough to start a notch. You want a tiny little notch to start with, and then we'll make it bigger. Patience. Think Kwai Chang Kane in the old TV show. Patience Grasapara. Continue to cut away. Following the lines, just like in the old coloring books. It's kind of got a flat root in the bottom. And on a lot of them, you're going to find that one tooth is going to be a little short, but that's okay. Patience is the key. Now, on these files, I've got one that's got file teeth on both sides. This is one out of the cheap set that has the same thing, okay? And that's what I'm going to use to do my filing. I'm going to file one side of the tooth and then the other. Flip it over, file the other side. Once you get down to the file, that's when it's going to really start taking shape.
again. I keep trying to hold this so you can see it. And it's not how I'd usually hold it. So make sure you're nice and comfortable with how you hold it. Make sure you get that root down deep enough. And get your angle on your teeth. to the back and out at the edge where the teeth are, bring it down a little bit thinner. Look at the teeth from both sides. I'm just making it flat with the knife. Get that last little bit of stuff out of there. Whatever tool works the best for you and you're the most comfortable with. If you're a really good wood carver, you might want to do this all with the knife. find myself carving a lot of stuff. And there we go. Before and after. This ring will now work just fine as a 360 ring. No problem. Um, I could probably put one of these in an envelope and send it to you if you really need me to, buddy. I could put it in a, a 5x7 envelope, put three or four stamps on it, and stick it in the mailbox, and I'll bet it gets there. So let me know if you need one. Hope that helps. See you next time.